can't even explain to you that my life got so much better when I realized that I was the source of pretty much all of my problems. What's up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and what I like to do, I take different topics going on in the YouTube community and try to see what we can learn from them because if you're like me and you're regularly trying to improve your mental and emotional well-being, like make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And yeah, this morning I was actually planning on doing another video but I was checking my Twitter feed and I was like, oh, Oh, we need to talk. We need to talk, baby. So anyways, um, just, just so you know, I'm gonna refer to this thing going on in the world as the situation, okay? Not the situation from Jersey Shore, but just the situation because YouTube is kind of finicky about discussing this whole topic, so just be warned. Well, anyways, this morning, uh, Trisha Paytas, put out this tweet. Like, I get why people dislike me. Dude, I freaking get it. But do people ever let up? Like, some people really never get tired of being nasty. All right, so again, if you're new to my channel, this is about us, okay? This is about me and you, okay? This is about me and you, okay? We need to look at these situations and see how we're acting in our own lives, okay? So I'm gonna talk about two different things versus the situation, okay? But then I'm gonna talk about, you know, having self-awareness and realizing how we cause a lot of our own problems. Like, it's easy to sit here and be like, oh, Trisha, you don't get it. But like, I used to do the same thing. I sometimes still do the same thing. And when I see stuff like this, it is a reminder. All right, but first, I'm gonna talk about this reply. It says, I don't think people should send you mindless hate, but I think you were kind of harsh to Dissociate Did and Breland, and the situation isn't a joke. I know you're stressed, we all are, but I think you need to step back and look at what's happening. Trisha Paytas replies, Blair girl, I don't expect you to agree with everything I do or say, but dang, I'm 32. I think I'm allowed to live and speak my truth without PC police coming for me. Let's focus on people doing actual harm in the world. Doing actual harm in the world? Hmm? I literally talked to, literally Dr. Drew today. But other doctors and a lot, it's just it is just the flu and like yes the flu can kill anybody actual harm in the world a lot, it's just it is just the flu and so i actually got quite a few messages about those clips of trisha paytas and i didn't want to dedicate a whole video to it but i just want to talk about the situation real quick like let's let's put this in perspective okay have any of you ever worked in retail or just at a business where you've had to close? Like you had to close at night, right? And you were closing in like five minutes, 10 minutes. It's getting close to the end of the day and you're just waiting to go home. It's been a long, stressful day, right? And somebody walks in the door right before you're about to close and you're like, dang, I gotta stay here late, right? Like, that is a jerk, selfish move on the other person's part. Well, now, with the whole situation going on, multiply that by a billion, okay? Like, it is very selfish and self-centered to downplay what's going on. Like, the first aspect of it, I keep seeing all these stories, and I'm like, why do people do this? How do people still not understand the gravity of this situation and I see people like the president and I see certain governors like Philip DeFranco just did a story yesterday about this governor who was like, oh, we didn't know this was asymptomatic and you could have the symptoms and not show them for a couple weeks. How the f Governor Brian Kemp, you are an idiot or a liar or both? And then you had those, that pastor in like Florida who just got put in jail because he refused to listen to the the quarantining and not having these big public you know services and everything like that like he went to jail but the thing is when people in power or people in in influence with influence talk about this and downplay it and make it seem like a big deal that gives other people a pass to say oh this isn't a big deal but the selfishness and self-centeredness like like what's really hit me hard what's really hit me hard is seeing 
our healthcare workers. Seeing these videos of our healthcare workers, like, I cannot even imagine. I quit my job today. I went into work and I was assigned to a COVID patient on an ICU unit that has been converted to a designated COVID unit. None of the nurses are wearing masks, not even surgical masks in the hallways when they're giving report to each other. I had my own N95 mask. I told my manager, I understand we're short on supplies, but let me protect myself. Let me feel safe. I have family that I have to come home to and the way things are looking, this isn't gonna get any better. America is not prepared and nurses are not being protected. It's just, it is just the flu. And right, I can't imagine. Like, you are purposely exposing yourself to this situation, right? Like, to help other people, like, that is mind-blowing. And then you have all the grocery store workers and everybody who, like, is helping society still function with our basic needs. So, to make it, to make it about you and saying, oh, it's not a big deal if I get sick. Like, if I get sick, I'll just go to the hospital. Like, you're putting these healthcare workers at risk. Like, they are going through, like, like I keep thinking about how we're gonna have uh, cases of PTSD after this is all over. There are people, I can't imagine how many healthcare workers are turning to substance use, right? Like, just drinking their faces off. Okay, like first responders have a high instance of PTSD as well as substance abuse, right? And now like we're gonna have a whole new wave, like six months from now, I promise you, you're gonna see a spike in addiction rates, overdose rates, as well as treatment rates, because these people are going to have developed a problem. So to see somebody like Trisha Paytas say, people doing actual harm in the world, promoting the idea that this situation isn't a big deal, like, that, that kind of bothers me. But again, this is for all of you. Like, I just want you to think about that. I just want you to think about when you're going, you know, when you're going out and downplaying this thing or whatever, like, just remember, like, you are taking away from these healthcare workers and putting them in a terrible position. A lot of those healthcare workers are not even able to go home and see their families, okay? That is what they are doing for us. So the least, the least we can do is try not to continue to go to the hospital. And they're overcrowded, they're lacking on equipment, they're lacking on pro like proper um, safety equipment. But anyways, I can rant about that forever. But anyways, Patricia Bay is to say people doing actual harm in the world, like that's, that's actual harm. Like some of the stuff like with the dissociative identity disorder and everything like that, like that was awful and she upset an entire community, you know what I mean? But now we're talking about like the physical well-being of people. Anyways, there's the end of that rant for the situation. And I hope you guys just think about that before you make these decisions you shouldn't be making. So anyways, getting back to it. Do people ever get tired of being nasty? And you know, why do people keep coming after me? So now I'm just gonna share a quick little story, okay? Like I said in the intro, my life got so much better when I started to realize that I was the source of pretty much all of my problems. And it happened when I got sober. Like this was drilled into my head, just all up in my head, it was drilled in. So when I first got sober and I, I moved into a sober living house because I didn't have money or insurance for treatment, I went to a sober living that my mom was paying for. It was about 500 bucks a month and I hated it. I hated that sober living so, so much. I needed it to save my life, but I hated it so much. By the way, quick recovery tip, if you hate treatment or sober living or whatever it is, that is more of a reason to stay clean and sober, okay? So in that sober living, um, I finally got a sponsor after like three months and I used to call him. Like when you first get a sponsor, you just call him and complain about everything, right? And I called him and I'm just like, dude, I hate this house. I hate everybody I live with. You know, people are like stealing my food. There was this guy smoking meth in the garage. Some other guy was smoking meth in the bathroom, right? And aside from that, you know, there was one TV in the house. These guys were watching like Pawn Stars all day long and it's just annoying. I was living with like, what, like 15 other people? And I would call him and complain and he would stop, he would soak it in and he would say, Chris, did you make any decisions in the past that put you in the situation that you're currently in? And I'm like, 
Are you serious right now, bro? Like I'm calling to complain to you about how the whole world is not thinking about me and my needs and my well-being, and you're gonna tell me to look at myself? I was so mad. But he was doing that based on something that's actually in the AA Big Book, which everybody can benefit from. And it says, we make decisions based on self which later place us in a position to be hurt. When I was working at the rehab, I used to tell people to write that on their arm. And whenever they were upset, whenever they thought the world was out to get them, look at that and say, okay, did I make any decisions that put me in the situation that I'm currently in, okay? So anyways, after I moved out of that sober living, I ended up having to move in with my mom, okay? Like, I didn't have any money, I didn't have anywhere else to go, even though I was like five or six months sober, I had to move in with my mom. And I called up my sponsor again, and I'm like, can you believe this woman? I'm a 27 year old grown man and she's bossing me around and now she's trying to be a mother to me after being an alcoholic for 20 years. I hate living here, ah, da, 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 just going off. And he sat there and he soaked it all in. And he's like, Chris, did you make any decisions that put you in the situation that you're currently in? So just like the sober living, just like living with my mom, I was the reason I was there. Because of my substance abuse, because of the terrible decisions I made, because I pushed away every friend and every family member that I had, nobody would let me stay with them. I was there in that sober living and then I was there with my mom. It was all 100% due to me, this guy right here. But because he drilled that into my head, I started looking at it in every single situation. Right? Like when I moved back to Vegas and I was looking for a job and I was so upset that these jobs would only hire you if you had a, a college degree, right? Well, why didn't I have a college degree? Me, the decisions I made. I could have gotten a scholarship from Nevada to go to UNR or UNLV pretty much for free, but I slacked off in high school. It was my fault that I didn't have a degree, right? It helped me look at my relationships. I'd always look at my relationships, oh my God, why can't I just find a good woman? Because of me, I had terrible taste in women. I kept dating the wrong women. I was looking for women who were feisty and a little, a little crazy, right? I like that spice in my life, right? But I was making decisions that put myself in that situation. And if I'm being honest, and I don't like discussing it anymore because I move forward, but I want you guys to learn from me and my mistakes as well. I look at everything that happened to me last year, I caused it. I caused it. Like, although, like, I got really, like, it was just tearing me up mentally, I realized that I made a lot of really dumb decisions that made that situation way worse. Okay, so I span this across my entire life. And if you wanna do something, a, a simple practice, like start doing this everything in your life, every time you get upset, every time you get upset, ask yourself, did I do anything that put me in this situation? And I think Trisha Paytas will start to realize how much better her life can be when she starts looking at her life like this. But that's for all of us, man, that is for all of us, we need to look at all of our situations. And don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. There are plenty of things in our life that are absolutely out of our control. A great example is childhood trauma. We didn't make any choice. We were just born into that family or you know, things happen and we, we didn't have the ability or even the mental capacity to make better decisions at that age. There's, there are a select uh, uh, few situations that are completely out of our control. Hell, look at what's happening in the world right now. This thing that's spreading and the cause of all this, we have no control over it, but what do we have control over, okay? Like, I can only imagine, I can only imagine someone getting sick and be like, oh my God, I have the terrible, I have the worst luck. And trust me, there might be something like you had to go to the grocery store to feed your family, it might've happened. But the people who are like going to these, you know, uh, these like parties or like these outings or hanging out with all their friends still, or, you know, going to these big church services. Like, if they get sick, like, it's not the world. It's not, like, just bad luck. It's like, no, you made decisions that put you more at risk for getting the situation happening to you. You know what I mean? So, again, this isn't a, just a video to, like, sit here and, like, dunk on Trisha or anything. We all need to look at what we're doing and how we cause so many of our own problems. The last thing that I'll end with is this is one of the most empowering things you can do 
for your mental health. When you start realizing that you have a choice in most of your situations, things get so much better, right? Like if you are struggling with your mental health right now, you have choices, okay? You have a choice. Are you going to take your mental health medications or not? That is your choice. Are you going to go to therapy or not? That is your choice. Now, if you don't have insurance and can't get medications, if you don't have uh, 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 insurance or money to get therapy, right? You have the choice to look up state-funded uh, options, okay? And even if those are out of your realm, are you meditating? That is your choice whether you do it or not. Are you reading books, like the millions of books I suggest? That is your choice, right? Like think about all the choices you have because I am a believer that we have no right, no right to complain if we are not at least trying to our improve, improve our situation. And trust me, I get it, it can be hard. I get that you might try one thing, but that is when we step back, we reset and say, okay, now I have a choice. Am I gonna try again or am I gonna give up, okay? When you realize that you are making decisions that impact your life, most empower, empowering thing in the world, baby, I promise you. Okay, I thought this video was gonna be 10 minutes. Sorry, it's a little bit longer. But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody out there supporting that, the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my mental health books or the merch from the merch store. And a big thank you to everybody who is practicing some good, healthy social distancing. I'll see you next time.